Hello viewers, my name is Kareem. In today's video, we're gonna build Tamiya's 48 scale Phantom with a boatload of aftermarket sets added. And we're gonna finish it in a one-off scheme. Grab your favorite drink, sit back, and let's kick this off. I start off by modifying the kit parts to fit the Black Dog resin set. Lacquer thinner is my preferred approach when you have to clean up Mr. Surface Air in tight spaces. It doesn't damage the surrounding areas like using sanding stick wood. Modifying the bottom part is a bit more delicate, but the kit parts just click into place beautifully. We all do mistakes. Uh, here's my first major one in this build. I inadvertently managed to melt the kit part while trying to make the resin engine bay conform with a hair dryer. Out with the two-part epoxy to rebuild the area, sand, polish, and we're good to go again. I use black as a base primer for the gear base and add some warm brown as an under layer to the white. The intakes on this kit are really well engineered. A base layer of white, I now speckle grime gray then blend the drops with fast dry thinner. I love this technique as it allows you to leave subtle staining. I like using the Ushi Trinity template to quickly add paint variation. The fit of the very ramps to the intake parts is exceptional. Throughout this build, I'll be using the Edward stencils. They're super thin, and as a bonus, the carrier film is peelable.
And there you have it. All the parts for the intake sub-assemblies are ready. Let's start work on the focal point of any aircraft model, the cockpit. Black primer, MRP lemon gray for the uh, primer, which I will then ship with MicroMesh. A very thin mottled layer of dark gull gray to show wear. Some additional brush chipping to reinforce some of the chipped areas and lighter gray for some subtle surface chipping. The Babibi 3D decals went down well and I blended them in with a mist coat of dark gold grey. The overspray was tidied up using lacquer thinners. With all the cockpit components ready, we can proceed with applying some washes to add depth to the details and then we can seal everything with a flat coat. Oils were used to further accentuate the grime and dirt in the cockpit, as well as some pigments for dust.
To simulate the glass face of the instruments, I use clear UV resin which works to treat. Place a dab, cure it with UV light, and you're done. For the crown jewels of the cockpit, I've used the Edward Brasson seats. There's a lot of details there. I use black CA to glue the smaller parts and I wipe the excess with debounder. Super easy and super clean. Liquid mask is an easy way to protect parts when using tape is a bit complicated. I decided to scratch build the pull handles as the PE ones look too flat. Just needed to paint the yellow striping on them using a double zero brush. A flat coat seals everything in.
The front gear bay is ready and we can glue it to the bottom of the cockpit tub. Let's start work on the engine bay. Reference photos show green paneling on the sides as well as pronounced heat staining on the bare metal parts of the bays. Multiple old cloud colors were used. A similar approach was used for the engine using all clouds and MRP metallic paints. The kit exhaust section was painted with various shades of green. Oils and pigments simulate the soot and staining. Once you close the exhaust halves up, the kit exhausts are close to being seamless. Reference photos show the turbine end of the engine has some really funky heat staining. To paint that, I use a light beige color and sponge on some orange acrylic colors from the Ammo MIG rust set. Next step was to blend some orange oils, then add some darker oil speckling. The outside surface of the engine exhaust shows some regular lines, which we will simulate using different base colors under the metallics. Marker mesh blends the paint ridges, and yes, you guessed it, I really like speckling, so more of that. Finally, we highlight the painted in lines with metallic pigments. When installing the resin spine, make sure you reinforce the joint with a good amount of CA from the bottom. I add missing rivet lines that are not on the resin part and I prep the area for coming paint.
I pre-paint the areas that are going to be behind the intakes as it would be very difficult to do after installing them. The fit is good, just some minor blending would be needed. Let's start the main painting. I want the bottom white to have a warmer undertone. I use various warm colors, brown, beige, and I model different panels. Warm grays are also used. I decided to paint the walkways instead of using decals to make the weathering easier. Gray undercoat, NATO black, mottled on top. Top side is going to have cooler tones, so I use blues and blue grays as an undercoat. I build up the bottom color with thin coats of insignia white. I apply the same treatment for the top light gull gray color. I start weathering the walkways by using micro mesh sanding pads. A gentle rub is enough to distress the paint. I also do the same on the radome. Another focal point of any phantom build is a hot section. I lay down a solid coat gloss black. Now my trick to showing the heat striations on the titanium is to use this Gundam permanent marker. I then use different old clad and MRP paints to differentiate the many panels.
The kit exhaust cans were used and they do the job well. Again, all clads are your friend here. Some judicious masking brings out the different part sections. To show a different heat staining technique on the cans, I use sepia inks for the gold tint on the bottom of each individual exhaust petal. I finish off the weathering using oils. The open resin panels get a base coat of different shades of green. One thing of note is Tamiya omitted the rear view mirrors. I cast some copies from the Zuke Mura kit. I highlight the pipes on the spine with acrylic glazes. Great fun! I also add some chipping with primary yellow to some of the frames. Strips of red decals simulate the few lines as per references I used. Decals are complete. A quick wipe to remove any residue from the decal setting solutions. I distress the stencils with micro mesh pads. Field applied touch ups were airbrushed with different grays. I also used liquid mask to do some hard edge touch-ups. Let me give you the background story on the scheme I chose while we have some nice video rolling. 1477 was a US Marine Corps F4B Phantom from VMFA 351 Squadron deployed on the USS Forrestal. During a cross-decking exercise, which saw the squadron deployed on British HMS Ark Royal in Med, 1477 broke down. The Ark was to make port in Malta's Grand Harbor. As the Maltese were not on good terms with the US at the time, and not enough space was available on the Ark below deck, 1477 had its tail and national insignias overpainted to be less conspicuous amongst the other Royal Navy aircraft. Heat resistant putty is painted along the edges of the hot sections.
Wiping the oil wash off, I let the wash stain the surface as I want to leave a grimy effect. A previous satin clear coat helps to that effect. The underside of the phantoms used to get quite dirty. Staining and streaking is done with oils. The canopies get the center mold seam removed and get polished with a cotton wheel and Tamiya polishing compound. To give the aircraft different sheens, I like using different clear coats on different surfaces. The walkways got a dead flat coat, while the fuselage and the wings got a satin coat. Another trick I use to help differentiate panels is the use of oil filters. They thin the surface and in this case, I wanted the section below the internal fuel tanks to look more faded and yellowed. I also chose some panels on the top side to further accentuate the patchiness of the finish. We're getting around the end of this build, so let's start gluing in the last little sub-assemblies and tying all of the weathering effects together.
here's our completed phantom i hope you've enjoyed my first video build with flatline media and i hope i was able to inspire you to try out new and different techniques please consider subscribing and liking this video if you haven't already until next time happy modeling my friends